Hi everybody, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Tonight's episode is something I just thought I might do um, just spur of the moment. Uh, I have to memorize a Chopin etude for my upcoming doctoral recital uh, next Saturday. Nothing like putting off the memorization to the last minute, right? Um, but it's just a short little one, uh, <clears throat> four pages. Uh, it's the Opus 10, number six. I'm also doing a few other Chopin etudes. Um, and this is the slow, uh, soft one that'll contrast with some of the more technical ones. And I just thought it might be useful for some of you to watch how I memorize things, uh, as some of you have asked me to, to do videos like this. So I thought I would do those and dedicate that to you. Um, the thing that I always like to do before I start memorizing is become quite familiar with the piece. So I feel like I've got a pretty good grasp on the piece. And I'm just going to go as far as as I feel is necessary for you guys to watch this before it gets too boring um, on how I'd memorize this. The thing I always like to do is personally when I'm in a time crunch I will start at the end okay so and what I'll do is I'm just gonna kinda think out loud uh, as I go through this today so so each of you know how like kinda the thought process and what I like to do I'm a big believer in kind of tracking progress. Like if you're exercising or working out, knowing your progress is helpful to motivate yourself. Same thing in, in piano. Um, I like to just put little X marks like and, and then circle them. Um, you can do a number system. You can do whatever you want. But that just helps me keep track of where these memorization points are. And each little X section, I usually like to take two or three measures. And in my performance, those are little rescue points. If I ever get in trouble um, during the performance, I can jump to the next X section in my mind. So here we go. This is uh, just from the beginning. Let me just play a little bit of this so everyone knows what we're, what we're doing here. start right at the end. I like to start at the end because it always gives me an end result. I'm always finishing somewhere, so that's useful. So um, I have some ties in, in here. I'm starting third to last measure, so maybe I'll start even just a little further back on this, C sh uh, this A major chord. <laughs> I'm looking down at my hands a lot. I'm looking up at the music a lot. I'm just trying to get familiar. Most people either only look at their hands and so they make mistakes in their memorization because they're not looking at their music carefully enough or other people uh, simply look at their music and then when you look down at your hands, you're like, whoa, this looks way different than what I'm used to. So I'm trying to get a little bit of that going. So I'll just get, get in the groove with this. I'm just gonna try that a few times. So I'm thinking, the enharmonic of E major. So we're in F flat major here. And by the way, if, you, if you're not this good at theory, that's okay. I'm not saying I'm any good at all, really. Um, I know a little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm no theory expert. What I meant to say is if you don't know these chords like A major, E major, A major, F flat major, that's okay. Just kind of notice what the, the shapes are looking like of the notes. So here we go again. Okay, now I'm gonna just slide that over there and try it memorized. Okay, I've got it up to there. And then I'm not sure what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna do that a few times. Okay. 
okay, there's a B flat major chord. That's something I can hold on to amidst all of this chromaticism. And I go to G flat because I'm, it's going to form part of the E flat minor chord. Okay, here we go. screwed up those ties at the end. I've got to think, tie that B flat. I always wish Chopin would have done in a reminiscence of Bach there, uh, how Bach sometimes ends. Anyway, okay, here we go. artistry here. I want to really get that to be as beautiful as I can. When you give yourself an artistic thing to hold on to, it really helps. Um, I don't know if this is uh, just getting incredibly boring, um, but uh, I want each of you guys to know something. We judge ourselves more harshly than we should most of the time. And I look at myself, I'm like, my gosh, I suck. That just, I'm looking at my timer here on the screen and it says seven minutes and 15 seconds. And I think, oh my gosh, seven minutes to memorize a line, that's pathetic. I'm sure my peers could do it in three minutes, you know, or one minute uh, if they're really brilliant. You hear stories. I heard a, a story about my um, fellow pianist, Daniel Trifonov, who, I mean, I am comparing myself to probably the best young pianist in the world here. Um, so it's maybe an unfair judgment because he's just so good and I don't, I'm not, I can't even approach his level. But um, one of my friends said, yeah, he, he came to accompany me on a recital. This kid's a clarinetist and he hadn't even opened this. I mean, he hadn't even sat down at the piano and played through the score and he just played it like nearly perfectly. And so then I start thinking to myself when I'm memorizing this, like, my gosh, this is pathetic. I, I just took 10 minutes to memorize one little thing and this is hopeless. Don't let those patterns plague your mind. People go at their own pace. Maybe that would take some, someone else, maybe one of you watching, that would take you 10 seconds. Maybe it would take you a week. Maybe it would take you two weeks. But it, it just matters that we persist and we progress and that we don't give up hope because music is about creating the most intimate experience we can each day i'm taking a harpsichord uh sem well it's a baroque uh music seminar right now uh as part of my doctoral coursework and the teacher uh it's so interesting so if you're i'll just set this to harpsichord um He's, he says that if you're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe you'll play it differently each day. So if you're just playing this little Bach. Maybe Tuesday it's... Maybe Wednesday it's... I'm not saying you have to go that extreme, but be creative with, with these things because music is about spiritual renewal each day, okay? What I just did talking there, absolutely take a little break after you've memorized something. Uh, go get a drink, go to the bathroom, uh, check an email. I don't care what you do. But just give yourself a little breather. Now try it again.
one more time just for safety. Okay, I'm ready to mentally stimulate uh, the, the memorization of a new part, okay? So um, I'm gonna mark another little X mark here, okay? Notice, I, I took my time there. It's feeling pretty good. It's a little shaky, but not too bad. Here we go. Okay, something here that I notice is um, one of the memorization things, rather than thinking just, oh, this is uh, F flat major again, going to B flat major with some chromaticism in there, is I'm going to look at, uh, this per passage strikes me uh, as significant because of the way my hands are shaped around the keys. So in other words, I'm playing mostly right hand on these inner voices here. See, this is mostly right hand, and then my left hand grabs this one. Right hand, left hand. This one's turning out to be pretty easy. See how I didn't do it quite so beautifully? Sometimes just vamping. So I'm going to go against my rule and say sometimes you can throw artistry out the window for just a second just to get the pattern. Oh my gosh, wow. There we go. Okay, so I start with octaves, A flats, and left hand. Okay, now let's put the artistry back in. ready to move on. I could cut the video here. Um, this would probably be a good point for any of you that, that, are, that get the point to stop watching, but I've had a few of you request that I just make a nice long video, just watch me how I work, and uh, I'm happy to do that for you. I, I'm honored that you would even think that that's valuable. <laughs> but So I'm just going to continue. I'll point out things along the way. Uh, so it keeps a little bit of engagement, but thank you for joining me if you are going to sign off now. Um, otherwise, let's keep going. Let's see here. Where is a good place? I'm going to go back and play. I've got two lines here to deal with. like a good place. That E flat, that's a strong memory point. If I got lost, I could remember that. Now I've got to figure out what I'm doing in my left hand here. Okay, so F. Not quite ready for the memory yet. CD that way until I like put that in my music I like it's like I'm not ready to commit to it it's stupid but it's just a little thing again you're tracking your progress so write that in I know by the way I notice a lot of students in lessons I have to kind of be 
bossy with them because I'll say, let's try that and let's count that out loud. And they'll say, okay. And then they'll try it and they won't say anything. <laughs> and I've just demonstrated how to count it to them. And I said, okay, let's do that again while you count out loud. They'll count once and I say, try that again. And then they don't count it again. And I have to keep saying, keep counting out loud because what that does is it's positive reinforcement. Any positive reinforcement that you can give yourself is helpful. So let me let me show you another memorization technique here. Um, e flat octave going to the A flat. Going to this beautiful Chopin is pretty tough to analyze. Um, sometimes he just does chromatic moves that aren't really explained. Uh, like, oh, this is a traditional move that we would see Bach make. Uh, sometimes, you know, this is so unexpected. Very beautiful. As long as you know you're going to this C flat major chord, <coughs> you'll have you'll have a little landmark in your mind, okay? So I'm gonna, again, say that out loud. E flat octave, A flat, B flat, uh, B flat, going to a G natural. I'm gonna try that left tone, hand alone. Now, I don't always advocate that you memorize hands alone, hands separately. You can do that if you want. Some teachers think that's really important. <laughs> After, 20 years of memorizing, I have to say that unless it's Bach and, and you're memorizing each individual voice to really master it, that's a little labor intensive. Um, you can do it and you'll have that extra security blanket if you memorize it hands alone, but the piece as a whole isn't meant to be played hands alone. So sometimes I do like to memorize hands together. Uh, most of the time I memorize hands together is what I'm saying. So here we go. E flats, A flats. That's what's happening. That's holding there, so. Okay, again. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. Just when you start feeling good, then something happens. I gotta check this. I'm gonna look down. I'm gonna say another tip here. Look at the black and white key relationships, okay? So what I'm gonna think, I've got all black notes. That's just gonna go back and forth between black notes, and then it goes to a white note on an E flat major third. You know what, even if you don't know theory, if you don't know, hey, that's E flat major, or I have no idea that that's an F flat major chord, find little ways to think about it, even if you have to name it something totally <laughs> unrelated. Oh, this is E flat, even though it's a C flat major chord there. Uh, I'm just gonna go to the E flats, just identify a note that you can remember it by, and that will give you a little landmark in your mind to remember. Now this is the main theme, the opening, so this is pretty easy to remember if you've practiced this piece at all. So this one should go really quick. And uh, I'm just going to go back and check my fingering from the beginning. So 
I'm going to transfer that over to here. I like 5-2 more than 5-1. I don't like that. It tangles my hand up a little. Don't ever feel weird about writing in your music. I actually love writing in my originals because I lose my photocopies of music, but I always keep my originals. And who cares if they're dirty? It's like, it's not that expensive to replace it if you need it for a competition. But the knowledge that you get on a daily basis, that inspiration, that's priceless. You can't replace inspiration. You can't just buy that again. But you can buy a clean score anytime you want. So write in your music. Write any thoughts down that come to you as you go. And you'll be so surprised. Inspiration builds upon itself. So you think, if you write introspective, right here. Maybe you just write that and you think, oh, that's great. But then the next day you think introspective, oh, this really contrasts. This seems more determined. So then you write determined in your music and then you write remorseful. Something like that. It builds upon itself and then you start painting this tapestry with the piece. It's amazing how that happens. Okay, here we go. I don't like my fingering in the left hand there. I'm gonna lift my hand. Cool, here we go. you guys will think about that. I'm going to remember that now in my performance. So that's a saving point if I screwed up like that. Okay, here we go. Okay, you guys just watch me do that. N pretty good. Now, I'm gonna say out loud what I'm thinking this time, okay? So, E flat major, or sorry, I'm gonna screw these up, I guarantee it while I'm playing. E flat minor, here we go. I'm thinking of the C flat, the left hand there. Switch my hand position in the left hand. Switch my left hand position and do that chromatic thing. I'm gonna go to the E flat here. Ah, gotta remember that E flat major. I got that cool B flat chord. F flat, B flat. Now more introspective. Now my A major. So four lines down in 24 minutes. Okay, picked up a little steam from my seven minutes. I, I got it back down to six with that <laughs> per line, um, with that uh, easier part. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the video now because it's just gonna become more repetitive of, of the exact same things. Just to uh, just to review what we've gone over. We have gone over saying things out loud as you go, looking for black and white key relationships, looking if you don't know your theory and you don't know the harmonies that you're listening for, find a landmark note that works well for you. Repeat small sections 
as you go. Little tiny parts build into bigger parts. That will be good. If you keep making a mistake, say that mistake out loud. Say, I went to the G flat, or the G natural instead of the G flat. See, now in my mind, when I log off and I play that again, I'm gonna be thinking that G flat, because that's what I just screwed up on. Also think of adjectives, remorseful, introspective, brilliant, bright, uh, sad, uh, you know, dripping with passion. You know, whatever you want is, is completely fine. Think of those things and realize everyone goes at their own pace. If you are intimidated by how fast I went tonight, then um, don't be, because I teach students all the time that might be able to only memorize two lines in a week. If you think I'm absolutely pathetic with how slow I went tonight, then more power to you. <laughs> You'll probably beat me in the next competition. But remember that uh, memorization speed is not everything. Uh, ultimately, it's how we express the music. And memorization is just one of those steps that helps us express in an even more free way. Okay, so um, if any of you have any questions, please email me. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Also, if you're interested in private online lessons through Skype, you can send me an email at the same address. Thanks so much for joining me tonight.